today's GCSE geography lesson, we're going to be looking at why do people live near volcanoes. I'm standing in front of Mount Etna here in Italy, which is one of many active and dormant volcanoes around the world. Up to 500 million people live in the danger zones of these volcanoes. For them, the positives must outweigh the negatives. For us, the negatives are obvious to think about. The pyroclastic flows, the earthquakes, the volcanic bombs, the lava flows, the uncertainty of everyday life. Something might happen just around the corner. But for these 500 million people, the positives must outweigh those risks. We're going to go on a little tour around the world and see some places where this is in action. Let's have a look. My first stop is here in Iceland at a geothermal power station. These power stations are around the country and they're used to heat 87% of Icelandic homes, provide them with free hot water and heating throughout the year. This generation of energy produces very little greenhouse gases, so it's actually a very green form of energy and obviously very cheap. Simple process that cool water is pumped down into the earth the heat of the earth heats up that water, turns it into steam, which turns turbines, which generate electricity. Or that hot water is pumped straight into homes, into their radiators, to heat them that way. Let's have a look somewhere else. My next port of call is here at Kawa Ijen in Indonesia. As you can see behind me, there's a sulfur mine here. And sulfur is a product of the geological processes that are happening around these volcanic areas. A lot of money can be made by mining and selling this sulfur. But Indonesia is not the only place where this happens. Other precious minerals and ores are mined at many, many volcanic areas around the world. Another example would be Mount St. Helens, where they mine for things as precious as gold, silver and copper, which are all products of this volcanic action that's happening underground near these volcanoes. Let's go have a look somewhere else. The third reason we're going to look at as to why people might live near volcanic areas is tourism. Tourism can generate huge amounts of money. And as you can see from the view from my hotel window here, Mount Fuji in the background is a huge tourist attraction with up to 100 million people visiting Fuji National Park every year. That supports a massive economy with hotels and restaurants and everything that goes with the tourist industry. So a lot of money can be made from these tourists coming to see what are often beautiful sites. And let's go have a look at our fourth place around the world. The fourth reason we're going to look at in today's lesson is the unwillingness to leave, or apathy, which means to believe that something is not going to happen. This was highlighted here in Mount St. Helens in northwest USA very well in 1980. Before 1980, there had been quite a long period of more than a hundred years where Mount St. Helens had been a sleeping giant. In fact, the previous large eruption was between 1800 and 1857 and there was a series of larger and smaller eruptions over a 57 year period. But after that time, Mount St. Helens went quiet and the local people believed that it had become extinct. So when in 1980 the US Geological Survey came by and said they believed that there were signs that Mount St. Helens was going to erupt, many people didn't believe them. One man in particular, 83-year-old Harry Truman, right to the end, he refused to leave his house at the base of Mount St. Helens. And when it erupted in May 18, 1980, he was killed. This highlights people's uh, unwillingness to leave the place that they've grown up in, even though they may believe that it is a dangerous area. Let's have a look at our fifth and final place around the world. The 
fifth and final reason we're going to be looking at in today's lesson as to why people live near volcanoes are the fertile soils that they create. That brings us full circle back here to the beautiful foothills of Mount Etna in Sicily. I'm standing in a citrus farm and this is only possible because of the beautiful fertile soils that are fed from the volcanic ash and tephra that lands and fertilizes these soils every time there's an eruption. They're very high in mineral content which is brought up from the depths of the earth and help to fertilize and help grow these plants. But it's not just happening here at Mount Etna. You've got olive groves at the foothills of Mount Vesuvius. You've got the huge paddy fields of growing rice at the foothills of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines as well. So that's all the reasons why people continue to live near volcanoes around the world. Remember, when you're writing your answers in your exam, it's very important that you give specific place details to get those top marks. So good luck. <laughs>